Hi everyone, Melissa here. Um, today I'm going to be doing a design request that I got on Instagram by a follower by the name of uh, Nails Dip by Chanelli. That is their Instagram handle. I will put it here. But they requested that I attempt um, this marble design to show them how to recreate it with dip powder. Uh, they specifically requ requested the marble and the outline, not the leaves or any of the other elements. But I am going to incorporate some of the marbled color block part of it just because I like that look. So I've kind of come up with my own design for that. And I'm excited to do this one because it's marbling a little bit differently than I've done before using the spoon. Again, um, kind of playing with what is possible with that spoon marble. So. Uh, today, the colors I'm going to be using are Rebel Nails um, Patina. They're uh, number five from, from the Coffee and Cream set. I have um, Andrada's Jet Black, and then from Double Dipped, I've got French White, and then they're clear. So I'm going to be doing my accents on these two nails. I like to split them apart. Um, then I'll do Coffee and Cream, Patina, Coffee and Cream. So I'm going to go ahead and dip the base layers down. I'm going to be, I'm going to do two layers of French white on the nail, one of the nails that's going to have a full marble. Then this one is going to be a color blocked marble. So I will do this after so I can work out how um, I'm going to be applying the French white base because it's going to be blocked with clear. So I'm going to go ahead and get those solid colors down and then I'll start working on the rest. Okay, so I've got those colors uh, down. I have just two layers of, of uh, French white on here. It's not super opaque, unfortunately, but that's okay because uh, it should go opaque with the final dip into the marble layer. So we are going to work out the color block design for this nail. So first thing I'm going to do, first thing I will always do when I'm gonna do some kind of like color block or any other design on a nail, especially when with peel base on it is I'm just going to apply a layer of dip base and let that dry because this layer is going to dry pretty quickly. The peel base actually speeds up the drying process in the dip base. Um, but also because I don't want to mess up the peel base layer with the work that I'm going to be doing with um, drawing my, my sketch out for the color block or if I use tape or anything like that. So I'm just going to put I'll layer base down and let that dry. Okay, so I'm going to start by kind of um, lining out where I want this block to be, and I'm going to kind of do it like in a. I don't, I don't even know how to explain it, but I want to find the center of the nail. It's kind of like a, a smile line at the center of the nail, but like a crescent. I don't even know how to explain it. Uh, but I wanted to check out and be fine. But making sure that it has a symmetrical curve is going to be a little bit different. Difficult, so I'm just gonna make sure I start about the same spot on each side. Thank you. 
This is not a, a <laughs> this is not a layout I've actually tested yet. I, you should know that I, I do that a lot. But in my head, it looks good. So <laughs> let's hope my head uh, is working today. Okay, and I am going to be, I know I'm crazy, but I think I'm gonna be freehanding this because I feel like cutting out a shape that's gonna fit right in here is gonna be a little bit difficult. But if you have trouble with freehanding, you can definitely try to do that. Just kind of cut out a shape of whatever you want the clear spot to be. I mean, I could probably easily cut it out of this because the, the thickness isn't too off. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go wild here and freehand with this. So now that I have the shape down, I'm pretty happy with how it is symmetrically. I'm going to start filling in the white parts of it. I'm gonna do pour over for this, so I'll use a cupcake liner. And then of course, just making sure that there's not too much liquid on the brush so that I can really control where it's going. And then I will cover this bottom part down here. And I'm gonna do a couple dips like this. And you can always take like your water marbling tool and kind of scratch around the edge to clean that up. But there is gonna be black lines drawn over the top of that area. So I'm not too concerned about absolute perfection on these lines. I'm also not concerned about these baselines possibly showing through because I'm gonna be drawing black lines over the top as well. Okay, now I'm just gonna fill in the rest of that with some clear. Okay, now you can see that the layers are level. I'm gonna actually activate and just file this one just a little bit, just so it's a nice smooth surface to put the marble over the top of. Um, just because when you color block you can end up with a lot of bumpiness and that bumpiness will be hard to file down in the end You may file through some of the marble and nobody wants to do that So we're just gonna activate and just file the top smooth of it Okay, now that's filed. I am gonna do another layer of dip base over the top of this before I start getting into the marbling part Just because the activator layers in dip are gonna cause this layer to dry pretty quickly and I do not want the layer that I lay into this mark to dry quickly or I will not get full coverage and then that is not good. I'm going to be using a little spoon. So far this is my favorite um, little tool for doing these kind of marbles. I'm trying to uh, work with um, one of those 3D printing companies, uh, Chaos Concepts, who's been talking with me about possibly making a marbling tool a special marbling tool so we'll see if we can't get that going but for now this is perfect okay i am setting it up a little bit higher than i usually do well it's not staying up well i want most of the marble to stay towards the end so i can dip into it well i don't want to have to move it too much after i work the design out into the spoon because the more I move it around, the more the design is gonna move around and I am being very particular about where I put things for this marble. So I'm gonna pour some of my French white in. And then I wanna tap it so it's flat. Now I'm gonna get some patina here. I'm going to be using just the uh, scoop of a swatch stick as a scoop. Um, you can use the scoop end of a cuticle pusher. Um, I was using these for my practice and they were working very well. And you want to kind of work out where the nail is going to lay in, how you want the design to be. Um, so I'm just going to get the smallest bit of powder. Very gentle taps. I'm just laying a line down basically.
not a perfect line, kind of a squiggle line, and then I'm going to do a line going up. Um, and I'm going to start kind of, um, I don't want to swirl it all up. I want to keep most of the line intact. So I'm going to start pulling out from like the center of where the line I laid down is and just kind of like pulling bits of it out. And again, very gently, just grabbing the smallest amount here. And tapping it in to where I've already marbled, kind of in the center. Kind of darkens the marble line that I've created a bit, just in the middle of it. And I'm not gonna do a whole lot of movement with this one just a bit. I don't want to mess up like the kind of lininess of it. Again, just swirling it out kind of on the sides, maintaining that marble line down the center. I want a good layer here. Of course, not too thick or it can bunch up, but you don't want it to be too thin and not get good coverage. See, moment of truth, reveal. All right, I think it looks beautiful. Is it perfect? Nah, but I think it looks great. And there's gonna be more, a little bit more um, sharp detail added with some black gel at the end to really sharpen the marble lines. So it's totally fine. Okay, so now I'm going to just gently uh, the base down freehanded over the areas that are white and hope that I can do it quickly enough. here so I'm just gonna press it down and then a little bit of an overlap here so I'm just gonna scratch it off with the water marbling tool okay now I'm just gonna do a couple dips of white oh, I mean white no a couple dips of clear over these two and then I'm gonna activate and file everything okay now I've got these all filed um, and ready to go with the next part of the design. I'm just gonna do a quick layer of um, a dip base again over the two marble nails just because I wanna seal the porousness of the dip powder before I continue with my additional marble lines I'm gonna be doing with some gel. Um, I just wanna make sure that it marbles out well I'm going to let this dry real quick, and then I'm just going to give it a very light buff to get a bit more of a matte uh, finish to work on. Yeah, so I'm going to pour out a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol here to help me marble out the gel. And I'm just going to be using uh, I've got Sparkling Co. black gel here. I'm just going to put a dab, just a dot. You already see where my old dot was. I'm going to put a new dot where the old dot was. I can work with. I'm just gonna use a little bit of a, a little detail brush to lay some light marble lines out.
And then I'm gonna use this flat brush with the alcohol to kind of pull the lines out. And I don't want there to be too much alcohol on there, just a bit. Okay, and I'm gonna cure that black in place. I'm just do a 30, eh, 30 second cure should be fine because it's very thin. Okay, now for the outlining part, I'm gonna be using my quarter millimeter micron pen so I can get some good detail and I'm just going to start going along the outline of the nail with it to kind of draw in a border. Okay, I am pretty happy with the um, outcome of that, getting those lines pretty straight and um, filling all that in was a kind of time consuming process. I mean, uh, definitely was not a quick one, but uh, I still feel like it's the easiest way to kind of get this um, outline, this border look when you're doing dip powder. Okay, so I am going to do these with the matte top coat because that is what the inspiration picture has. Usually I would do a dip top coat and then um, buff that out and then do a matte top coat over the top of it, but I don't wanna risk putting dip liquids over these lines and smearing them in some way, so I'm just gonna make sure that these are buffed really smooth. and there we are with the finished design I do love how they turned out I think this was a lot of fun to try and figure out so I uh, want to thank Nails Dip by Chanelli for the request it's really beautiful and, and truly it, it did take some uh, playing around to figure out how to get this done but I love it so I appreciate it and um, I hope everybody enjoyed the design. I have my opal nails next week for my birthstone series. Um, this opal design, the idea that I have for it is actually the entire reason that I came up with the birthstone series in the first place at the beginning of the year, so I'm very excited for it and I hope that they come out the way I want them to, but don't forget to come back on the 1st of October to check those out. Um, as always, thank you for joining me and I will see you next time.